Once upon a time, in a magical kingdom called Elsinore, lived a king named Hamlet. He was a great king, well loved by his people. He had a lovely queen named Gertrude, and a son also named Hamlet. One day, King Hamlet was in the gardens when he was bit by a snake. The poisonous venom quickly killed him, and the kingdom went into mourning. Two months later, the king's brother Claudius married Queen Gertrude and assumed the throne. Prince Hamlet didn't trust Claudius because he thought he married his mother just to become the king, which seemed suspicious. One night, Hamlet's friend from university, Horatio, was on patrol at the castle gate. As the clock struck midnight, he saw the ghost of King Hamlet drift over to him. Horatio tried to talk to it, but the ghost disappeared. As a scholar, he knew it was important, so he went to find Prince Hamlet straight away. The next night, Hamlet and Horatio went to the castle gate. The clock struck midnight, and the ghost of King Hamlet appeared. Hamlet tried to talk to it, but it drifted away, so he chased after it. When Hamlet and the ghost were finally alone, the ghost of King Hamlet spoke. Hamlet, my son, I need your help. Absolutely, father. Oh, son, I need to tell you how I truly died. I was most bitten by a snake, but poisoned by my brother and your uncle, Claudius. He killed me so he could take my wife and my throne. You need to kill him. Once I get my revenge, you, my soul, will find me to rest. Can you do that, son? Of course, father. Listen carefully, Hamlet. He killed me just before I could confess my sins and go to heaven. So he must die before he can confess too. Do not let this sinful deed drive you insane. You must also be careful not to involve your mother, as she had nothing to do with any of this. That woman loved me with all her heart. Understand? Yes, father, I won't let you down. You must swear secrecy to all! Hamlet promised he would never tell anyone what he saw. Goodbye, son. I must go. girlfriend, Ophelia, was bidding goodbye to her brother Laertes. He was about to return to his studies in France. Goodbye! I'm like gonna miss you so much! Before I go, I just want to warn you about your boyfriend, Prince Hamlet. You are just his plaything and his love is fake. He is a prince of royal blood and can't choose who he marries. You need to break up with him before he ruins you, breaks your heart, or both. Make sure that you, like, don't get in trouble with the girls in Paris either. Lastly, their father Polonius said his goodbyes and gave some of his usual long-winded advice. Five minutes later, when he had finally finished, Laertes really had to go. They all bid their last goodbyes to him and he left. Once he had gone, nosy Polonius asked Ophelia what they were talking about before he came in. Ophelia's father was the king's counselor, so it was his job to be nosy and give advice. He began to add to what Laertes had said. You can't be a naive, tender baby anymore. You are valuable to me and I don't want him spoiling you. Don't think I haven't noticed you exchanging tender words with him. The tender he gives you is worthless. If you accept it and ruin yourself, you'll tender me a fool. You are my precious daughter. He may seem to love you, but he is just a green boy. I too was his age and I can recall how quickly blood boils and lust burns. I forbid you from 
seeing him, and if you must talk to him, be distant. Scorch his affections. Whatever, father. And she left to go to her room. Ah, uh, my dad just told me to break up with Hamlet. How dumb is that? I'm making an investment into the future of this family. When he becomes king, he'll love me enough to change the rules and make me his queen. Duh. And like, I do love him. I want him to have, like, a happy marriage, but with me. I like, refuse to marry some low-lying scum for a husband and like, become the wife of, like, some dumb guy like a fishmonger. I will become queen. Just wait, father. I will kill Claudius so Hamlet will take the throne with me by his side. I'll be like the most valuable daughter you ever had. Just then, none other than Hamlet burst in through the door. His clothes were in tatters, his face was pale, his knees knocked together, and his wide eyes stared at Ophelia. Hamlet! You look like you've just seen a ghost. Is like everything okay? Hamlet walked over to her. No, nothing's okay, and I did just see a ghost, my dead father's ghost. He told me that his brother, my uncle, your King Claudius, poisoned him. I have to kill Claudius now to avenge my father so his soul may rest in peace. I don't even know if I believe the ghost. It could have been the devil in disguise and I made a vow to it. But then again, I did have a nasty feeling about Claudius. Could the ghost really have been my honest father? Hamlet, like, calm down. We can totally figure this out together, like we always do. I always knew there was something rotten in Denmark. It could very well be King Claudius. They spoke for a while and formulated a plan. On his way out, Hamlet stopped to thank Ophelia. You're so good to me, Ophelia. You helped me overcome my father's death, the incestuous, overhasty marriage of my mother and uncle, and now this disturbing encounter with my father's ghost. I love you so much. Rose and crowns, Guild and Stern, welcome! How lovely it is to see you! The king wanted to welcome you personally, so I'm to take you to him. How have you been? Oh, not awful, but not amazing. Yes, we aren't at the feet of fortune, but we don't sit on her hat either. You know, there have been rumors going around that King Claudius' soul is at the soul of the devil's foot. They say he killed his brother to become king, so now his soul damned. Words, words, words. An old grey beard with a rotten mind speaks pestilent vapors. Yeah, don't worry about it. Claudius is king because the Lord above set him on that path. We all know we can't change our own destinies. Only the good Lord may do that. Cheer up, Hamlet. I know you have lots of reason to be depressed, but on the way here, we saw a traveling show, and they said they would come and perform here. Yeah. They've been rehearsing the murder of Gonzago. It's supposed to be way better than that other depressing play, Macbeth. Macbeth would have suited my mood more. I still can't get over my father's death. On that note, make sure you don't spoil the king's good mood by whispering the rotten rumors of my father's death in his ear. After that, they parted ways. Hamlet smiled to himself as he sought out the actors. He had just played his friends like a pipe. Now, they would go fret the king's conscience. His uncle's confession would be like music to his ears. Inside the castle, Ophelia was working on her and Hamlet's plan too. Her suggestions about the plan had been greedily accepted by him. She was easier to play than a pipe. Now, she just had to carry out her part of the plan, which mainly involved spying. She had learned some new things about Claudius, and now sought Hamlet to tell him. She set out, but was interrupted by her father. Ophelia, have you spurned Hamlet yet? Like, no, our love remains like as everlasting as the tomb's grave diggers make. You can't kill my feelings. You need to get rid of him. He'll spoil you. But only like the Lord can change my path. We're bound together like Romeo and Juliet. Oh, but what about the Lord's representative on Earth? Or King Claudius! You wouldn't! Don't force me, girl! I am your father! But since you won't listen to me, you have better listen to a higher authority! I shall speak to the king about your insolence! 
After having delivered his friends Rosencrantz and Guildenstern to their king, Hamlet was on his way to see the actors. He bumped into Ophelia. Hamlet! I'm like so glad to see you! So I've been totally spying on the king to look for clues of his like guilt. And so, so far I've like listened to his prayers and his conversations and his prayers are ridden with guilt. It's like he's so guilty for the murder that he committed but he totally won't repent because he likes what he's gained. Also, whenever you come up, he changes the subject. It's like he doesn't like like you or something. Or he thinks of you like as a threat. Or maybe he just like wants to kill you. Should we be worried? Don't worry, we'll just have to be more cautious. Continue spying. I need to go to the actors to request a couple changes in their play. Don't worry, it'll forward our plan. Um, wait, like before you go, I just ran into my father and he's convinced that I'll only listen to a king's order to break up with you. <laughs> That's a relief. Our plan is working perfectly. He told you what? Straight from the horse's mouth, he said someone told him you had murdered your brother to become king. Leave me! A servant will show you to your rooms. We bid you farewell. Do you think he really knows what I did? He can't help! Who oh, would have told him? Your brother's ghost! Besides, I needed to make sure you wouldn't just marry me for the crown! You've proven yourself quite worthy! Yes, you're right. There's also this Ophelia and Hamlet business that Apollonius spoke about. It is too late to save my son from depression! Do what you must to save Polonius' sanity! Your little rat deserves that much at least! Besides, Ophelia has stepped way over the line and needs to be reminded who she really is. Just a silly little girl who has not experience with real love like I have. You are so right, Gertrude. I will deal with them after the play is done. But come, we will be late. Let her feet fly as swiftly as lovers' thoughts. A king is never late. Everyone else is simply early. The king and queen made their way down to the palace's theater. Ophelia waited until they left before she too slipped into the theater. The play commenced, but instead of the normal murder of Gonzago, the death of King Hamlet was acted out. The actors used different names, of course, such as Glaudius instead of Claudius, but the king blanched and stopped the play. He dismissed everyone. Then he spoke to both Hamlet and Ophelia to order them to go and refresh themselves before coming to his room immediately. It's Hamlet, that rumor, that adaption to the play. It's all his doing. We have to get rid of him. I know what. I'll send him back to England on the pretense that he needs to finish his studies. I can ask the Englishman to accidentally kill him. No, my husband. I have a better idea. We can poison him. But poison is a woman's weapon. I'd rather duel him to the death. Unfortunately, it would be way too suspicious. Take arms against a powerful king, and by opposing him, to be damned, but to save my father, I bear the rub. For I could bear the whips and scorns of crime, the oppressor's wrongs, but then my father's soul would forever lie in anguish. Thus conscience makes cowards of us all. The native hue of resolution is sicklied over with a pale cast of thought. Oh, my fair Ophelia, I don't think I have it in me to kill Claudius. I must talk to him and forgive his sins. Oh, Hamlet! 
what? You're like so mature. That'll be like totally more heroic than the murder of a king. Communication is key. Speaking of communication, I was spying on your uncle, father, and mother, and before the play, and he like had to kill his brother to prove he was being worthy of your being your mother's lover. <laughs> it didn't even have anything to do with the crown. So since he just wanted her, maybe he'll give you the crown. Be open and talk to him, like man to man or something. And also try to convince him we should stay together too. Okay, I'll try and talk to him. Yes! Let's let him go! Hamlet! Your mother wants to talk to you in her closet. I need to speak to Ophelia. Um, no. I need to talk with you, Uncle, and Ophelia needs to talk with my mother. We won't split up unless I speak with you and she with my mother. Fine, then, Ophelia, I order you to break up with Hamlet. Hamlet, you are to go to England to finish your education and find a British wife. You can't order her to break up with me. I'm crazy in love with her. If you break us up to marry me to some English princess, I'll go insane and kill myself. No, you won't. You are my son and the future king. Anyways, you need to go to England to finish your education. Um, if you'll, like, allow me to interrupt... Hush! Your king is speaking! Show some manners! Please, don't do this to me! You already killed my father! Don't kill my one good relationship, too! What are you saying? I committed treason to ascend the throne?! Yes! Oh. Ah! Um, now I'm gonna interrupt. My queen, I think your son's like just insane or something. Think of all he's been through. He totally can't be in his right mind. My second husband has just been murdered by my son who's gone from depressed man! <laughs> What's the point of living in this crowd? <laughs> then, before anyone could stop her, Gertrude crossed the room and emptied the contents of the poisoned cup. Shocked from the recent events, she fainted, never to wake up again. We, 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 we did it? Like our plan worked? We convinced them you were mad because of the breakup, which gave you the excuse to kill Claudius. You're king now and I can like finally be your queen. Yeah, but now my soul is damned and my mother's dead. Who will testify that this wasn't a murder? They'll kill me or never let me rule if they find out I killed two people and I'm supposed to be insane. Right. So, like, now I can't be queen? Okay, we're over then. We're totally over. I'm breaking up with you. Oh, and I was never here. What a bad investment. Mm -hmm.